guys, it's Ashlyn. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a kind of dupe video for the rosé and the air palette and the modern renaissance but can you guess which eye is which i bet you can't honestly like you'll just have to see if you know it's a dupe or not so go ahead and answer the poll right here if you guys think that it will be a dupe or not i mean you might be able to tell by the eyes because you probably can't tell the difference but this one is four dollars and 68 cents while this one is 42 dollars so if you like you know to see if it's a dupe or if you want to have some help figuring out which one to buy then let's keep okay, on watching. so i've already primed my eyelids which just means that i put concealer on them and set them with some powder and i've done my eyebrows so let's just go ahead and get on with the eyeshadow didn't even turn on my lights okay so this eye is going to be modern renaissance and then this eye is going to be the wet and wild so let's you know see how they compare so i've already set my eyelids but i mean might as well do it again. I'm using the shade Tempura, which is this matte cream colored shade, but it compares with this shade, yeah, this shade in the Wet n Wild Rosé in the Air palette. They're like pretty similar. They're, they're not as similar as they could be because Tempura is a little bit more pink toned and then Wet n Wild one is a little more like yellow toned, so... Oh, and I didn't mention, but I have used this palette before, so like I kind of know how it works, but I haven't compared the two sides yet, so this will be my first time doing that. So the second color I'm going to take is the shade called Warm Taupe in the Modern Renaissance palette. Pretty much the same as this shade in the Rosé in the Air palette. I don't really use Warm Taupe much from the Modern Renaissance, so I don't really know what look we're going to be doing. literally the same thing like of course this is just the transition shade but it did the exact same thing i'm now going to take raw sienna from modern renaissance and it compares to this other transition shade from the wet and wild one so that's how they compare pretty similar if i do say so myself so, obviously really good now wet and wild Now I'm taking Real Gar, which is like the orangey shade in the palette in the Modern Renaissance. Then it really compares to the shade in the Wet n Wild one. Literally identical. Like, I'll just show you what they look like together. I don't know if you can see that. This is a really awkward transition, but <laughs> really, really identical. I, I hate when people say this, but I am shook, actually, like, wow. And then to darken up the outer corner a little more, I'm going to take Cypress Umber, and this girl has had some love. She has is well used, about to hit pan, but it's like the exact same as this shade in the Rosé in the Air. I think by now they're pretty much the same, so... We'll just have to see. This is the only shade that I kind of have trouble with. It's not super easy to blend. As you can tell, it's kind of just like getting stuck there. And that's from the Modern Renaissance. So, but I mean, you can get it to blend. It's just kind of hard. I don't know. This is the only shade in the palette that I have a problem with. But now for the Wet n Wild one. I mean, this almost seems a little bit more blendable, no tea, no shade, but maybe not quite as pigmented, but 
I mean, do you really see that much of a difference? And then I'm not going to do like a half cut crease or anything, so I'm just going to go straight into the lid color. So I'm taking the shade called Primavera in the Modern Renaissance. She's well loved. And then this shade in the Rosé in the Air. They are as similar as, as similar as they could really get. It's kind of hard to show. Um, Primavera looks a little bit more gold. I don't know, I, you can't really tell, but I think that Primavera is a little bit better, but we'll just have to see. And I'm not spraying these at all just so they can get their full potential. Okay, right off the bat, this one isn't as like shimmery. It's kind of more, I don't know, it's not really chalky, it's just doesn't isn't that like i don't know it's not as like you know for lower lash line i'm gonna take raw sienna which is that shade and then cypress umber on more of like closer to the lash line and then obviously just this transition shade and then and then this shade <laughs> Oh my gosh okay i am so wow okay um it looks as if i use the same palette on both eyes i'm just gonna be honest it was like the same like at, for like blendability and all that stuff the really the closest difference i can see is the lid color but literally everything else is like the same exact thing so I'll give you more of my conclusion at the end after we do the face makeup, but as of right now, I am like... Okay, now the primer I'm going to be using is the e.l.f. Blemish Control Face Primer. You may think it's green, but it's not. If you watch my full face of e.l.f. video, this was in it, and since then, not since that video, I have liked it. I mean, it's not a bad primer by any means. I don't know how blemish controlling it is, but... I like it. And then for concealer, I'm going to be using two of the Shape Shape concealers. This one is obviously lighter than this one. So I'm going to be using this one mixed with a little bit of this one under my eyes to like brighten a little bit more. And then this one kind of as a foundation, you know, so full coverage. I'm also going to be using this to like highlight some areas. So like the high points of my face. My summer shade of the Shape Tape is like super close to running out. And I literally have not used it as foundation another time. I mean, I have like one more time, but it's like really close to being out. I'm just going to blend it all in. I just forgot to use my um, Becca thing under my eyes. The brightening thing. I don't know. It's this thing. I forgot to use that, but it's okay. Now I'm going to use the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This is in the shade Extra Deep. It was sent to me through Octoly, and this was the last shade that they had available. So I got it with um, cream or liquid contouring in mind. So I just put a dot. I just work on one side at first so it doesn't dry. And then I just take a dot, and then I blend it out. And this is actually really good as a liquid contour. Um, I think that it'd be great as a concealer also, but I decided to get it for a liquid contour this time. And I really like it because you can make it like subtle or bold if you want. And you can also put it under your foundation if you want like a really bronzy foundation. So I really like it and the link for it will be down below. And also, because it gets on my beauty blender, I'm just going to run it down my nose a little bit for a super duper subtle contour. Let me use the Shade and Light palette for my powder and contour. I always forget about these powders down here, so I'm gonna use it today. My phone just decided it'd be okay to just run out of storage mid-video. I already powdered my face since my phone ran out of storage, and so I'm just gonna use the first two shades in the Shade and Light palette for contour bronzer. Brush I'm gonna use is the Shayna B Powder Brush. This is a super good bronzing brush. I absolutely love it. I have been really, really, really enjoying it for contour and bronzer and blush. The company that actually um, sells this brush and that sponge I was just talking about, they're actually like a smaller company. They only have around 400 followers on Instagram as of right now. But they are so sweet, let me just tell you. And 
so yeah if you're looking for a nice you know powder brush or bronzer blush brush this would be a good one to go for the blush i'm going to use is the makeup revolution matte blush in the shade nude this i just don't really use much so i really needed to get it out and use it i'm gonna use the same brush but like look how natural it puts it on like it's so good and I know I said I would give this a break, but I can't. I feel like it just goes so good with the look we have going on here. I'm going to use the Sun Nips Glow Kit. Ugh, I love it so much. I can't, like, give it a break. It's too hard. But I'm using Summer. I'm also putting it on my nose and my cupid's bow. And I'm going to put it in my inner corner and brow bone. Since there wasn't really that great of a highlighting shade in... The Wen Wild, and I figured it'd be unfair if I used it for me or on this side from the modern renaissance. And I just realized, so I did my eyebrows off camera, but I didn't even set them, so they're kind of wonky, but I always forget to set my eyebrows for some reason. So the mascara I'm using is the Wet n Wild Mega Wear Mascara, but I always curl my eyelashes before I put it on. I'm using the Too Faced Melted Chocolate Liquid Metallic Lipstick thing in the shade um, Melted Candy Bar. And I used this in my last tutorial on my Instagram with this type of look with the Modern Renaissance. And I loved how it went with it, so I'm just going to use it again. Okay, I freaking love how this lip looks with this look. Okay, so this is the final look. I feel like with mascara on with this eye look, you can really not tell that I've used two different palettes. Like, they're literally identical. Um, I'll scooch it a little closer so you can kind of see what it looks like up close. So this side is the Modern Renaissance, and then this side is the Wet n Wild. So, in conclusion, I think that... Okay, that sounded like a writing report for my English class. Okay, let me restart that. So, overall, I think that if you don't have the Modern Renaissance, but you're looking for a little cheaper option, um, I would definitely go for the Rosé in the Air. But if you are really wanting the Anastasia, you know, name brand, or if you're kind of collecting the Anastasia palettes and you don't already have the Modern Renaissance, I would go for this one. But this is definitely, definitely, definitely a dupe for it. So... It really just depends on what you want, but this is just as good as quality, honestly, as the Modern Renaissance. Of course, the packaging isn't as, like, you know, nice, but the eyeshadows are literally so good. Really, the only difference is the price. This one is, like, $4.68 at Walmart, while this one is $42. So, you just gotta, just gotta you know, weigh it out. Um, so I hope this video helps you in some way. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe it down below. And yeah, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time, hopefully. Bye! I'll never stop.